Well, good morning, everyone. We're in Acts 15 today in Sunday school. It's the 15th day of the of the month, and we uh, we've been doing this for a little while. We're going to do it for a little while longer. Book of Acts, chapter 15. Book of Acts tells what the church should be doing, and as a good example for us of what we ought to be accomplishing. You know that we today are a continuation of the Book of Acts. We're a continuation of it. Um, the, the, the book of Acts, uh, the, the, this New Testament age, it will culminate or be finished with the rapture of the church, which could be today. The, the, uh, the book of Acts, uh, I think it would be best described as the Acts of the Holy Ghost, Acts of the Holy Spirit, better than the Acts of the Apostles. I think the best naming of it would be the, the Acts of the Holy Ghost. So let's look at today's day, the 15th, in the book of Acts of what a church should be doing in this day and age. And a certain, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, there's all kinds of different false teachers that, that teach the wrong way of salvation. There's not too many in this day and age as it was then because you got to remember that the, the book of Acts was what is called in the Bible the transition period, the transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Now, people were saved in the Old Testament the same way as the New Testament, by grace through faith. The father of, of Judaism, uh, Abraham, it was said of Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then in verse, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, uh, Romans 4.4. 4. And in Romans 4.5 it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, the, so, so justification by faith has always been taught in the Bible. But in the Old Testament, it was very dimly uh, seen. It wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't seen as clearly. We look back very clearly to the cross, and we have the description of it in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. About The, the, the synoptic means they retell the story. Well, all three of those uh, gospels uh, tell of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So... We, we have it very clear, but in the Old Testament, they were just shown for by pictures and things. Now, the book we'll be, we'll be preaching out of today in church will be the book of Isaiah, which was the strongest book in the Old Testament uh, teaching salvation, the book of Isaiah. We're going to look at Isaiah 57 today in, uh, I think there's 21 verses in it, but that's what we're going to be having in church this morning. But, uh, but the Old Testament taught the same plan of salvation by grace through faith. In fact, um, in the New Testament several times, it says that the gospel was taught by Moses and the prophets. Now, uh, what, what, what does it mean? We talk to each other in Sunday school, so let's communicate one with another. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, when, when the Bible says that Moses and the prophets taught about taught about Jesus uh, when he said Moses what did that mean uh, when he said Moses and the prophets talked about Jesus so when he said Moses what 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 did, did anybody know can you remember what that meant well it meant this it, it it meant that 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 the Lord Jesus Christ was taught plainly in the Old Testament scriptures now Moses was a writer of Old Testament scriptures. Do, 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 do you remember what books Moses wrote? They're called the books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are the first five books of, of the Old Testament. They're called the books of the law or they are also called the books of Moses. So in Genesis, Exodus, uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy, th those five books, uh, Moses told about Jesus. Did, did you just 
Were you going to say something or are you just waving your fingers? I'm, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm and, and, and then it said Moses and the prophets talked about Jesus. So the prophets, uh, that's really easy to understand, isn't it? That's that's the prophets. Uh, does any, by, by the way, anybody, I'll, I'll extend it one more week here. I'll give it another week if you've been... If you've been faithful and 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 you've memorized the books of the Bible, and uh, and and you've memorized Psalm one, and you can repeat it to our Sunday school class, I will I will put across your hand a twenty dollar bill. If you if you if you if you do that, now someone did it. Uh, Joanne did it last week. Now someone said, well, it ain't fair. She had memorized the the books of the Bible before. Well, that's a bonus. Then if she, if she already memorized that, she just had to memorize a first psalm. That's good, but but you, you, ought, you ought to memorize those. And it's not because I'm I'm trying to make things difficult for you. I'm trying to help you. Everybody ought to know the books of the Bible. You you had just like I uh, you know uh, some people don't even know if a book's in the Old or New Testament. No, 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 no. Don't blurt out and say nothing. I'm going to ask a question now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a question, and, and I want you to raise your hand if you know the answer. But don't blurt it out now. Just put your hand up. I'm going to ask you now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to name. I'm, I'm going to give you a name, and you tell me uh, if it's in the Old Testament or the, or the New Testament. Now, remember, there's 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in, in the New now don't blurt it out. Just raise your hand if 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 you got a if you think you know which is in. Is the book Hezekiah? Is it in the Old Testament? Uh, how, how many of you think it's in the Old Testament? Okay. How, how many of you think it's in the New Testament? Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, we've got we've got three that think it's in the Old Testament. And one that think it's in the New Testament. The rest of you. Uh, uh, you, uh, you're not sure if it's in the old or the new. Well, the rest of you are right because it's not in the Bible. <laughs> there ain't no book of Hezekiah in the Bible. <laughs> it sounds like it. That's a tricky question. That's almost as bad as me saying I never kissed my wife. Yeah, it is. It is, Billy Joe. That's a trick question. Now, uh, 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 now Hezekiah. He was a king, but come on in. Just pull the door, pull it, pull it, pull the door, pull the door, pull on it, pull it. John got it. John got it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. You need an intercom out there going. Just pull the door. All you gotta do is pull on an Angie. It opens right up. Yeah, just be. I know it's it's a new. We got a new system now, but you come in by just pulling on it. But, but but Hezekiah, it sounds like it should be a book of the Bible, but it's not. So that's why you have to, when you learn the books of the Bible, you know it isn't in the Bible. And uh, uh, I mean, but usually, usually if someone thought it's in the Bible, they'd say it's in the Old Testament. No one ever thinks it's in the New Testament, except one person today. But no, <laughs> but no. <laughs> That's the first time ever in my life someone thought it was in the New Testament. Really. I just messing with you. I'm just messing. Easy for me to be wrong. Me and Vern didn't. Team Vern But anyway, uh, Angie, we're in Acts chapter 15. Acts 15. And it says, a certain man, which came, and, I'm sorry, and certain men, a group of men, a teaching, a false teaching, came down from Judea, talked to brethren, and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So these Jews in the transition period, which was, uh, uh, which was here, uh, good morning, good morning, Doris, good morning, Sharon. I talked to I talked to Doris uh, yesterday. She's feeling a lot better. 
and she her voice sounded so much better and and her precious daughter Sharon just watches over her like a mother hen you know and and make sure she has the right doctors and the right medicine and everything she's really uh, she's but well, she takes care of she don't just she watch over mama more than anybody on earth but she take anybody she'll uh, give them advice on stuff she's one of the, she's one of the most loving and helpful people uh, that I've ever seen she's just she's a she's a giver and she learned from her mother Doris is the queen of it of course but she's taught uh, she's taught Sharon pretty well too and so Sharon and, and uh, uh, Doris were in Sunday school 15th day of the month uh, is uh, were Acts 15 and a certain and certain men which came from Judea taught the brethren and said except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses he cannot be saved so people are telling something we had some people come in in uh, Thursday nice folks oh, they, yeah. they, they were very nice folks and and these these precious folks that that came in they wanted to help they say that they love homeless and they go all over the country and they uh, they have an RV and and they help home they do things for homeless people they even said we go to uh, uh, homeless people that are out in the woods and and we've even uh, installed pumps for people that needed I guess in certain situations you get where they weren't even near water and whatever I guess you'd put an artesian well in or something I don't know but they said that and they're just real nice folks and they said can we help today and I said sure you can they said they might come back today I, I hope I hope they come back today but they move along uh, 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 pretty much uh, oh my friend uh, Lieutenant Buck how are you my good friend uh, Larry Buck been buddies at uh, police department forever and I love to ride with Larry. I, I usually, we're gonna ride again pretty soon, Larry. I'll be calling you. But he's been a faithful member of uh, Daytona Beach Police Department forever. And I love to ride with, with Larry. He's a, he's a great cop and we've got a great police department and he's been a good one for his, uh, good, good to see you this morning, Larry. I can't see you, but you can see me. But anyway, these dear folks that came in yesterday were volunteers and um, they said, could, could we help you today? And I said, well, sure you can. And I says, I'll, I'll, and I let them help. I, I let them serve the people and bring the food and, and, and bring the uh, uh, dessert and, and all of that, the tea, and I let, let them wait on people at tables. But I asked them, I said, the first thing when they came in, I asked them this. I said, you know, uh, I just want to let you know what we're all about here. It's, it's not about food, clothing, and shelter, and all that kind of stuff. I says, uh, it's all about telling folks about how to get to heaven. And uh, I asked them if they were saved. Now, the, the, the lady, she, he was, he's a little more quiet than she was. She's more outspoken. And, and, uh, and she said, yes, you know, they're saved. And, and then... Uh, I asked them, oh, then she, then she told me, she said that they were in the Church of Christ. And, uh, you know, what? one thing about me, I'm just, I'm just really outspoken, you know, I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joe says, I know. And I said, you know, Beverly, when you say you're in the Church of Christ, I, I say the red flag goes up. Red flag goes up. And she said, oh, why? And I says, because the Church of Christ teaches that you're saved when they baptize you. And that's what Church of Christ teaches, the one down the street here. And the one over there on uh, Hand Road, the rock and roll one, that teaches the same thing. Uh, Church of Christ, uh, they teach the same thing. They teach what better baptisms. But just like these false teachers in Acts 15 t said you had to be circumcised to be saved. Of course, we said in the book of Acts was the transition from the Old Testament to the New. And of course, uh, it was part of the Jewish law. Remember, you had, to, you, you, you had to be circumcised. And then, of course, they pick up stuff there as he got the Seventh-day Adventists today um, that are false teachers. And, and they say they worship on the Sabbath. They say no Sabbath today. They, and, and by the way, it hadn't changed from Saturday to Sunday either. 
uh, you don't worship the Sabbath anymore. That's it. Sabbath worship isn't done. Circumcision, uh, you can do it. Now, circumcision, uh, uh, people are wise to do that because the doctors say health-wise, the best time to circumcise a male is on the eighth day. They say health-wise, it's best. And that's what the law said to circumcise them on the eighth day. So God figured that out, you know. And and so that's fine. It could It can be done. But it's not keeping of the law to do that. Many Christians, especially in the Pente old time Pentecostals, uh, I know that because it's my history of my parents were and grandparents, that old time Pentecostals, they won't circumcise their males at all because they say that that's law. And uh, I don't think, I mean, if you have your child circumcised for the right reason of just a health reason, if you feel that's a health reason, you might, you might not. But they, as a belief of, of old time Pentecostals, they just they didn't do that, they didn't circumcise there because they say if you circumcise, it's following the law. But whatever it is, whether it's circumcision or whether it's baptism or whether it's good works or whether it's confirmation. See, when people tell me, like these dear folks, and they were sweet, nice folks, and they helped us, and I hope they come back today. Uh, I changed my sermon because they were here. I was going to preach in, in uh, Psalms uh, 16, and I, I changed my sermon to, to, to uh, John chapter 3. And the reason I changed it was um, I, I told the lady, and I says, well, when, when were you saved? And, she, and then she went back to her baptism. And I already told her the red flag went up with the Christian church, and then she's going back to that to bless her heart. That's why I preached on John chapter 3 because I said, did you ever hear about being born again? And she said, no. She didn't know nothing about it. But you got it. Jesus said you must be born again. Hey, Amen. There's people in here that don't believe you have to be born again. Uh, how do you know that? Because they ain't born again. They told me they're not born again. I have people come around every day tell me they're not born again. Uh, so anyway, here we go on. Uh... Verse 2, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, it said that they were fussing with them about it. There's some people, my dear friend Dora, she's watching today. God bless her. We miss her being here. We're looking forward. Um, she's feeling real good. I'm not pushing her to come back, but I hope she'll be back, you know, real quick. And we're praying. I don't push her. But we're praying she'll be back. Amen. But Doris don't want no controversy. She don't want to fuss with anybody about nothing. And she just don't. I mean, basically, that's a good way to live. I fuss with too many people. But I'm learning. I was, I was reading a book this morning. I think it's going to help me. And I, I, I sent it out to a, uh, a, a lot of people today. It's some preacher friends of mine, some Christian friends of mine. But it's not it's it's not good to uh, to because usually our fussing comes because of our pride. Do you know that we usually fuss because we have pride. We we, we we that's why we fuss with people. Uh, but it, but it says here that Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension. It means uh, it wasn't a small fight. It was a big fight. They had a big fight with this group because they had a false salvation. You see. But when it comes to salvation, it's worth fussing about. It's worth me talking to these nice people about that are going all over the country helping homeless people because as much as they're, good morning, sir, as, as much as they're trying to help homeless people and going all over the country in their RV, and, that, and, and that's a wonderful thing, I, I'm not sure, I don't think they understand about salvation. And they said this part of the Christian church. The Christian church are water salvationists. And I know a lot of people. I've got another friend, good friends of the mission. And they go to a Bible study uh, from one of the, probably from the big rock and roll Christian church. What's the name of that church? Calvary. Calvary? No, Calvary Assemblies of God. Oh, and you're talking about over uh, no, I'm talking about Tomoka Christian Church. That's what I'm talking about. Tomoka Christian Church. It's on Hand Avenue. I don't think it's as big as Calvary, but it's a big church. It's a rock and roll church because people tell me 
I like to go there because I like their music. You know why you like their music? You're worldly. You're worldly as a devil. <clears throat> you like the old devil's beat. Boom, 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 boom. You say, I like that. A lot of times I ask, I ask teenagers and stuff to go to these big so-called Christian events. And I say, well, what, what did you get out of it? They even pay money. They pay 40, 50, 60, 100 bucks to go to a so-called Christian event. And they got preachers there and everything. What'd you get out of it? Oh, I love the music. I love the music. If, that, if, if that's all you get when you go to something, there's some rock and roll junk music, something wrong with you. Because that ain't your Christianity that's after the music. It's your worldliness. He said, I don't agree with you. Well, I don't agree with me or not. I don't care. I'm talking the truth. Therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, and he determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question. They thought it was such a big deal. They were going to the, uh, they were going to the elders there uh, uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, who was a pastor in Jerusalem? We, I'd like to talk to you in Sunday school. Does anybody know who the pastor was in in uh, in Jerusalem? Who was the pastor of the church there in Jerusalem? Anybody know? James was a pastor. Yeah, I can show you in the book of it. James was a pastor. He, a, a, a lot of people uh, think that Peter was, but uh, but, but he wasn't. Uh, James was a pastor in uh, uh, and and you need a pastor. You need a pastor in a local church. That's that's the way God set it up. And that that's the way it goes, and and that's what the Bible teaches. I was, I read Titus, or so little 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 book of Titus is a good book. I studied in that. Yeah, I study all over the Bible every day, and I, I was re-looking at Titus, just a little small book, three three chapters, and Titus chapter uh, uh, two. It says, "The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world." Looking for that great appearing uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Titus two, uh, Titus two eleven of, of eleven fourteen, Titus two. Uh, but Titus is a, a, a is a, a wonderful book. And uh, what was I going to tell you? What why, that, why was I, I quoted that verse? I didn't need to quote, but it was one of the first verses I memorized when I was saved. I I I. Uh, I I, I I quoted that, but why was I going to tell you about Titus? I don't know. I'll remember it as I'm going on here. I should have told you about it right away without quoting that verse. And you should go up to Jerusalem under the disciples and, and others about this question. See, about the question of salvation. You, you, better know what, you better know what it has to be saved. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, period. It has nothing to do with being a Baptist or a Methodist or a Pentecostal or a Church of God or or Christian church. It has nothing to do with any denomination. Going to heaven has to do with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't you forget that. Now, I was saved in a Methodist church. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries. I'm a Baptist preacher. But none of those three denominations had anything to do with my salvation other than each of those denominations teach true salvation. Teach it. But you believe on yourself. Have you believed yourself? How many of you here in, in, in Sunday school, they say, I believe in the Lord. I know I'm saved and going to heaven. I know that. Just slip your hand up if you know it for sure. All right, good. Good, amen. Some do, some don't. And I'm glad, I'm glad if you do. Um, well, let me say this. It's worth fussing about. You see, uh, it said here that Paul and Barnabas had no small, they said they was fussing about it. They fussing about it so much, uh, uh, it, it said, uh, and certain about of them uh, should go up. They determined that Paul and Barnabas said certain other, send somebody, should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question, about this question of salvation. There's nothing more important than a question of salvation. Oh, I was telling you about uh, the rock and roll church over there, Tomoka Christian. So, some good friends of mine, they're, they're saved people, husband and wife. I text them every day, and they communicate back and forth with me a lot. And, uh, and, and, and I talk to several other people, too. 
they go to a Bible study from Tomoka. They have a, uh, they have a lot of Bible studies in houses, I think, in that people from Tomoka Christian. They have home Bible studies. And I, I told this couple, and they had, they had told, oh, they were talking about a Bible study where they met someone or someone else that I know from the, that I know that I text to. And, uh, and they say, oh, they know them from a Bible study. And I says, oh, where's a Bible study? And they said, it's from Tomoka Christian. And I told them, I said, watch out for Tomoka Christian. That's a water salvation church. That's what, that's what I tell people. I'm just honest with people. Now, you could, you could probably go to a Bible study from Tomoka Christian and, and uh, 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 learn 10 or 20 or 30 pretty good truths from the Bible. But you're going to miss the biggest truth. The only thing that matters is if you're going to get to heaven or not. Paul and Barnabas argued about it with the false teachers, and they thought it was so important they even sent people to the leaders in Jerusalem to get this thing straightened out. Because if you don't have salvation straightened out, you got nothing. He says, okay, well, they believe you have to go. It ain't what, yeah, they believe it. They believe a lie and they're taking people to hell. Huh? And I'm telling you that. Watch out. <coughs> Watch out. Verse 3. Amen. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through uh, Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they uh, caused great joy on all the brethren. And that was in Acts 14, 27 and 21. And Acts 21, 5, it tells that. They were glad the Gentiles were getting saved. Salvation's for everybody. Salvation for everybody, but it's the same way. Did you know a Jew can't get saved any different way than a Gentile? Everybody gets saved by grace through faith. It's a free gift, and, and God doesn't respect. I got a lot of people today, a lot of my real good friends or some relatives that, that are, are, are all hung up on the Jews, that Jews ought to be treated better than other folks. I don't think Jews ought to be treated better than anybody else. They're just human beings. People get so mad at me. I show them, this book of Acts is all full of scripture that says, ye with wicked hands talk to the Jews had crucified the Lord Jesus Christ and they had denied him and, and on and on. So they make a, and, and I said, uh, uh, the Jews as a nation uh, has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and hate him and they did. They, they go and some of them, uh, uh, Who's that big fat preacher on television? John Hagee. He's got a big crowd. I think Houston, Texas. He's, he can preach. That old boy can preach. But he loves the Jews. He's got, uh, he built a wall over there at his church and everything, a wailing wall. And, and uh, 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 he sits around with uh, rabbis. I mean, Jewish rabbis over there and hugs them like they're Christians. He's a dummy. He's a big fat dummy when he does that. Now he can preach sometime. He's okay. But hugging up the Jews, they're the ones that kid. They ain't no better. You say, well, you hate. I don't hate Jews, but I, but they ain't no better. They've got to be saved just like a Gentile. Everybody gets saved the same way. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the truth of the matter is, they with wicked hands have crucified him. And what happened with Paul, who was what a Jew and a Pharisee, and on the road to Damascus he got saved. And when he got to Damascus, what did the Jews want to do with him? A kill him. He was killing Christians, and when he became a Christian, what happened? The Jews wanted to do what to him? Kill him like they did Stephen. The Jews! So don't, don't come about this. I, I, I'm not a, they say, you're a Jew, I'm not a Jew hater, but you got a problem if you're a Jew lover. That's a good statement. <laughs> People accuse me of being a Jew hater. I'm not a Jew hater, but you got a problem if you're a Jew lover. Now I'm a Jesus lover, and Jesus was a Jew, and salvation was of the Jews. I mean, the woman at the well, remember that, the Samaritan woman? Remember how the Jews, again, were very prejudiced. They've been prejudiced all down through the ages. They're in, in, uh, the, uh, the Jews hated the Samaritans. How come the Jews hated the Samaritans? Everybody know Sunday school? Who, what, why did the Jews hate the Samaritans? They're half-breeds. 
They're a mixed race. That's why the Jews hated them. Yeah. They thought Jews should be pure and 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 not 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 now that now there is a Bible principle to this. You might get mad at me about this. Christians are supposed to marry Christians. That's why I see people come into my church and it might be a guy that's saved and with a girl that's unsaved or a girl that's saved with a guy that's unsaved. And I says, get away from them. Yeah. Oh, they're a nice person. Well, I'm going to marry them and then I'm going to get, oh, no, you're going to have a mess on your hands. You're going to have a mess on your hands. It's called, it's called, it's called separation from the world. Saved people are supposed to marry saved people. That's it. If you're saved, you got to marry someone that's saved. Everything else is out the window. But you got to marry a saved person, you see. Because there's only a, someone, uh, someone was telling me the other day, well, Pastor, you know, my race has been done against. I says, you're the same race I am. They said, no, I ain't. I'm black, you're white. I says, we're the same race. No, I'm black, you're white. Black ain't a race, white ain't a, right, a race. There's only one race, you know what it is? The human race. That's all the race there is, a human race. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. That's never been an issue with me. In fact, the, the, the majority of my ministry over these 40-some 40, 40 years uh, has been to uh, people of dark skin. The, the, uh, probably 80% of my ministry uh, has been to uh, uh, black folks, mostly poor black folks, ch children mostly in, in Milwaukee, in, in, uh, in the ghettos, in the hood down there, and in, uh, in the projects of Milwaukee. and. And it never make any difference to me. I don't care if it's someone. Uh, people, I, I told them, I, 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 they were upset with me. I said, you come to, <laughs> uh, oh, someone said, oh, Mayor, uh, uh, I think the mayor made the comment. Who's black? Derek Henry. I believe he's a Christian. He's a friend of mine. I, I know Mayor Henry. and He, he had a, uh, he had a text, or he had his comment on there uh, to the fact that um, uh, 11 o'clock, usually most churches have at 11 o'clock, we have our service at 10 o'clock, had the comment on there that um, that uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the most segregated hour of the week, and sad to say. Sad to say, it's sad. You got black churches and you got white churches. That's pathetic. You look around here. I got black folks on this side, white folks. I got black folks on this side, white folks. I got Spanish. I got. That's the way church ought to be. If you just got all black folks in your church, something wrong with your church. If if, if you just got all white folks in your church, something wrong with your church. We got them all over. They'll be meeting all over the city today. You go into some church where it's all one color, something wrong with that church. I mean, you, you, you say, well, hey, I don't like you talking. I don't care if you like it talking a lot. That, that's, that's prejudice. Plain to be so holy and sanctified, you know. God don't care about the color of your skin. He cares about the, uh, the character. What did, how, uh, how did Martin Luther King Jr. say? Doesn't care about the color you said, about the content of your heart. How was that statement? Why was it exactly said? I, I want to quote it right. But he had a statement, something like that, didn't What was it? Who tell, Who knows it? Someone should know it. Huh? The content of your character. Did, I, I thought the heart was in that statement. It is. No, he said the, you, it's not the color of the skin, it's the content of your character. Oh, okay. Did, did, he, he didn't have heart in, uh, in, in the statement? Oh, I don't know. Okay, but whatever. But it's a good statement. Uh, but it's a sad most, mo mo most people because the only thing matters if you're saved or lost. You believe in Jesus or you don't. 
Nothing else makes any difference. Rich or poor don't matter. We've got great divide between rich and poor, don't we? We've got great divide. I didn't even know that. When, uh, let me tell you this one. When I was a supervisor at the telephone company, uh, uh, Louis Caban, who was my best worker, he was the fastest worker I had and the best. Uh, 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 he wasn't a rocket scientist. I mean, I couldn't send him on a technical job uh, uh, with, with, with the, you know, to, to do a lot of technical stuff. But run a wire or climb a pole or, or, or do manual labor, that old boy could do it. But Louie was always in, in a hurry, and he called me, Hey, boss, boss, he says, uh, 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 Rosa, what was her name? I think her name was Rosa. Yeah, I think her name was Rosa. He says, uh, Rosa, give me trouble on the telephone. He had a real strong uh, Cuban accent. He's a Cuban or Puerto Rican, one of the two, Cuban or Puerto Rican. But anyway, uh, and so I so I talked to her, and, and uh, I called Rosa. She's a dispatch girl. And I said, Louie said, did you fuss, you're fussing with Louie. And uh, I said, uh, why do you people fuss? You shouldn't be fussing. I said, especially, I said this, I didn't know. She was a Mexican. He's a Puerto Rican. I said, you're the same. Get this, she says, what? I says, well, why are you mad? She says, I'm a Mexican, he's a Puerto Rican. I guess Mexicans don't like Puerto Ricans. I don't know, but that Mexican didn't like that Puerto Rican. I know that. Is, that, is there something to that Mexicans don't like Puerto Rican? I don't know. Well, I'm saying, there's, there's prejudice amongst people that look quite alike and talk the same language. <laughs> huh? It could be. Could be black folks, could be white folks, could be anybody. Prejudice just ain't between certain colors and all. That's what people make. By the way, we got a we got a we got a big prejudice problem today between black and white. Both ways, not one way, both ways. We got a big problem in America today with prejudice. And it's a sad thing. We've gone backwards in in in, in that. And, and 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 sad to say there are certain groups that are propagating trouble and causing uh, disorder uh, and anger between black and white folks today. That's a sad thing. I never had no problem like that in my churches or in my ministry, and it shouldn't be, and Christians ought never be that way at all. And uh, uh, Christianity isn't that way. What time is it? I got a little time yet. Let's go on. Uh, but there rose up, verse 5, but there rose up uh, a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believe saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the laws of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up. So they were still fussing about it. He fussed about it in the beginning. And I fussed again in verse 7. Peter rose up and said unto them, uh, this is Peter now, and Paul was fussing about it in verse 1 and 2. Uh, and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by the mouth, by my mouth, um, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Of course, back there in the book of Acts, uh, remember, remember in ch uh, uh, chapter 3 uh, especially, it, uh, it showed Peter going up to the temple and, and uh, on and on. And, and then, of course, uh, in, in Acts chapter 10, when the, when the, when the, sheet came down from heaven and he said kill Peter uh, and eat you know and he could eat the, the pig or the rabbit or on and on because there was ceremonial law that said Jews couldn't eat but that's all gone now you can eat anything now anything you want now and God which knoweth the hearts verse 8 bear them witness giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us, gave the Gentiles the Holy Ghost. Amen. Everybody gets saved the same. Everybody's the same. <clears throat> how, many, uh, how, how, how many races are there, church? Just one race, the human race. Forget about all this other foolishness. Forget about all your class differences, rich or poor or black or white or yellow. Just forget about all that. All the thing that matters is saved or lost. That's it. Saved or lost. That's it. Don't worry about anything else. And put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. Everybody's hearts are, pu are purified by what? Faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples 
uh, which neither uh, our fathers or our kids says, well, uh, why are you going to tell somebody got to be circumcised to be saved? That's putting a yoke upon someone. Why are you telling someone you got to come to my church, the Christian church, and be baptized? Why are you telling them that? Why are you telling them that? Why are you telling them they got to do something? I got, I got certain people that I'm, I got people that are really saved, but they've been around false teachers, and and uh, and because they've been around false teachers, uh, they believe you got to do good works to stay saved, and they believe you can lose your salvation. That's a damnable heresy. You can't lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. Once you have a heavenly father, you always have a heavenly father. That don't ever change. That don't change. I disgraced my, my earthly father before I was saved. I did things that were that were wrong, and I, 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 even, I even disgraced him publicly. He got me a job at the Ford Motor Company, and he had worked there for years. And, and I come, and he got me in there, and I made a fool of myself. I've... I've told that story before. I don't have time to tell it today. I'll tell it again sometime. I made I made a fool of myself and disgraced my father, and uh, because he had been in such strong standing there at Ford Motor Company, uh, they told me that if I quit, they wouldn't put it on my record and they wouldn't fire me if I quit. As a favor to my dad is what they did. But I, I disgraced him, and he saw me drunk in the hallway and, and having to be removed from the premises by security and my dear father. But you know what? He was still my father. Amen? Amen. Yeah, he was still my father. And, and we might disgrace. How, how many of you, since you've been saved, you've disgraced your heavenly father like I have? Hey. Come on. You've discreet. You have. You, you think about it long enough. If you don't think since you've been saved, you disgraced your heaven. Because if you if you've done one sin, you've disgraced them. And if you think you ain't sin since you're saved, you ain't nothing but a Pharisee and a hypocrite. Pharisee and a hypocrite. I get tired. Folks come around here, and all of a sudden they become better than other folks around here. They keep try looking down at them. Don't look down at anybody. You ain't better than anybody. You need to get that. You need to get that book I'm reading right now by Andrew Murray, or or you can get it on uh, AudioVox. Uh, they they read that. You get it free. I'm, I've got it. I'll, I'll send it to you. It's on YouTube. Uh, but they he, they they'll read the they'll read the whole book to you. I think I, I listened to it on reading. I think I'm on chapter 11 or 12. You're not right near the end of the books. About chapter 12. But 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 it talks about humility. That's the biggest virtue, humility. Humility is hard to come by. Humility. We we get the we get the, and uh, once once we do a little something for God, all of a sudden we get pride, and pride come up. And I could tell you story after story after story of people that because of what they uh, as being a pastor or being a Christian leader or this or that or the other thing, uh, they don't have a humble position. And they have pride, and they look down on others. Don't you look down on others? I hate to see people uh, come in. Some, some, some of you folks that are in here even today, you look down upon others. Shame on you. The only reason we look down on upon others, you know why it is? I'll tell you why. Because we think we're better than they are. That's the only reason. Yeah, we just, we just think we're better than they are. You ain't no better than anybody. If I'm anything at all, it's by the grace of God, and that ain't got nothing to do with me. Amen. That's all to do with God, nothing to do with me. Amen. So don't be, uh, don't be railing on others. Don't be calling other folks out. I'm talking to myself, too. We need to be humble. <clears throat> the key virtue of, of, of a Christian is humility because it was the key virtue of Jesus Christ. It says, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will in due time exalt us. That's what the Bible says. It, it tells about the humbleness and the meekness of Christ. Doesn't it? Doesn't it tell if you read the Bible? You know it talks about that. And he's supposed to be what? Our example. Shame on us for not being as humble as we should be. I'm, I'm going to teach today uh, on the secret to revival, and I'm going to teach, and I'm quitting. I'm going to quit right now because I'm over a minute to come. Listen to this. Isaiah 57, that's going to be our text today, 21 verses. And the key verse 
uh, is, is going to be that verse that talks about revival. And we won't have revival here without humility. Did you hear what I said? And I'm teaching on that in, in, in church just at 10 o'clock hour. So God bless you, Sunday School. God bless you, Facebook. We'll be back on here in a little while, Facebook. You want to come back and watch.